Hello, hello everyone. It has been a hot minute. Let me fill you in on what's been going on. So as you'll know from this video here, I uncovered a couple of truths from like the food blogging world, simply because I shared that it seemed like it was all rainbows and unicorns and everyone was gonna make their fortune from becoming a food blogger and how easy and amazing it looked. And I think that is where I struggled. So that is why really I uncovered those truths. Now, a lot has happened since that video. Going right back to when I actually had my food blog before I even started it, before I even bought my domain name, after doing a ton of research, the one thing that I really took from all that research and watching videos, etc., was this. Treat your food blog like a business from day one. Now let me repeat that for everyone in the back. Treat your food blog like a business from day one. Now did my food blog bring me any money? Absolutely not. However, it did lead to something else more extraordinary and has become a passion of mine and has completely changed my life actually for the better. I now am a full-time food photographer. I'm self-employed. I'm so in love with what I do every day. I wake up in the morning, I'm buzzing, raring to go. I think that is really important. Now that came from food blogging because food blogging taught me like patience, determination, perseverance, because you're essentially building a brand from scratch unsure if you're gonna make any income, although you do think you're going to in the beginning. If you continue it, you will 100%, but I don't think it was the journey for me. Two weeks ago, I received, two or three weeks ago actually, I received an email and it basically said, would you like to renew your blog? I had to think about it and they said, right, you've got seven days and after the seven days, we'll literally delete all your info if you decide not to go ahead. And I thought, right, okay, what do I do? <laughs> I didn't really know and like everyone was like, oh, you should carry it on. And it was something like, 250 pounds to renew it plus like a couple of plugins like recipe card and all that sort of thing so really essentially like around like 300 pounds for another year and this is for something that was bringing me no income considering I am doing the food photography full time and that literally takes up my entire time. I just thought, I just don't think this is for me anymore. You know, and it really sort of, I just really outgrew it. And this is not to say that this has to happen to you. Of course not. I mean, if you want to carry it on as a hobby, you really enjoy it. I mean, please carry it on. But I think the decision for me at the time was, I'm not doing this anymore. And it's funny because I get a lot of message from you guys being like, how was your blog? Or, you know, I think a lot from it stems from that video, you know, are you still doing your blog? And we tried to go on your website. This is the most recent one. We tried to go on your website. The link didn't work, lol. And I'm like, oh. I think I've received like a couple messages just to people like interested, what I'm doing. Again, I've gone from like one secret world to another. I mean, food blogging, I started to like tap into it and uncover these sort of truths. And really it comes a lot down to sort of technical stuff. Um, to make your sh your blog shine above others on like Google, essentially it's all down to like SEO. I went from that world to this world, which is like a mega secret world and it's pretty ridiculous. What planted the seed to go into food photography, I think was when my partner asked me, you know, cause I was doing a master's at the same time, like I started my food blog. Time was ticking and I'm not one to, time was ticking, um, but I'm not really one to be sat wait for things to happen absolutely not i make them happen so what am i going to do and i actually applied for a job and i was got an interview and i was speaking to the this lady and she started her own business and i remember i was like asking her all these questions about it because you know sort of you're in this interview and you, you're meant to ask questions about like i don't know the business or whatever and i was like asking all these questions like how did you start your business and how did you land your first client so i think that was quite funny from that interview i was lucky enough to then be considered for a second interview and i pulled out because I thought, I am sick and tired of seeing all these people get these great meaningful careers out of something that started maybe as like a mere hobby and then turned into like a passion. I said, and that's exactly what happened to me. So why can't I go ahead and do it? And I think that's when things took a turn because after I withdrew that application, Callum said to me, but really what do you want to do? And I think after I had this conversation with this lady, the idea of becoming a food photographer is what popped into my mind. And I remember Callum, my boyfriend, he said to me, I mean, what do you want to do? What is like your ideal job? And I said, I'd love to become a food photographer. And he said, well, go and do it then. But I think the thought to me was so overwhelming at the time because I thought, how do you, because that's, that it is starting a business and you just like, how do you get clients? How do you, like, I don't think my photos are good enough for that yet. I mean, you have sort of all these thoughts running through your head and then you get into this whole comparison game and then you start comparing yourself to like, everyone on social media and it's just like a complete nightmare. So I recommend you don't do that. However, I started thinking about the steps I would need to take 
to reach where I wanted to go and what I wanted to be. However, when I first started blogging, I did not know this was gonna happen, obviously, but really the love for food photography, you might ask, came from food, food blogging, really, because my initial photos were horrendous. They were, oh my God, I just, I can't. But that's normal, I mean, everyone, like I didn't know what I was doing at all. I've got about 10 years worth of experience in the hospitality industry. I've worked in it my whole life. And so food, I went to culinary school and everything. So food was no like surprise to me, you know, and I sort of, I'd always loved making food look good, but it was capturing it. How do you capture that? How do you make a plate of food look amazing, but then how do you capture it to look just as amazing, if not more to the viewer? So I think that was the really challenging bit of it. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Can I just reiterate? This is at the beginning of my, this is before I even want to know I want to go into food photography. I just took a massive interest into the photography side of things. And my photos essentially went from this to that in a very short period of time, we're speaking about eight months, which I'm dead chuffed about, you know, and some photos I would take, which were actually like looking back, they were so hideous. And at the time I was like, wow, they look amazing, you know, but that was just sort of, because I was buzzing about it. So what I started to do was essentially just like Googling, how do you become a food photographer? Like, how do you take better food photos? You know, just very niche, you know, food, food, food all the time. Like, I don't want to know how to take photos of wildlife, weddings, portrait. I've got no interest. My passion was food, always has been. And that is what essentially I want to hone in on. It is a difficult world, as I mentioned, it's like a secret one. Apart from your usual suspects, like The Bite Shot and like a couple of other influencers I follow that sh do share their food photography secrets. Yeah, it's like a hidden world. No one speaks about how they landed their first commercial food client. And you know, um, you've got all these Facebook groups and everyone's asking these questions like, how do people land their first client? How do people, but no one tells them it's like these read between the lines comments, you know? And so I think I sort of struggled a bit with that. And now every time I see someone sort of comment something like that on these Facebook groups, I'm right in there. This is what to do, you know? Because I like, I've been there and I know how crap it is. But to really improve my food photography, what I had to do was I started reading books. I um, started watching loads of YouTube videos. I started doing just a lot of research on like the history of photography because I think it's so important to understand, you know, how you can manipulate light, not just solely for food photography, just in general, you know, because just having a general understanding of it will make it so much easier for you to then learn it as a skill. If you've got a passion for it, hone in on the passion and you will be able to learn from it. So I then joined a course called Photography School and that was an amazing course. I really, really enjoyed that. Great things that were taught all about sort of lighting and composition and really started applying them to my photos. And that is what made a major, major change. Now, one mistake I did make was thinking that social media was the be all and end all and that your personal branding, I mean, you had to, I think there were, oh God, well, I better do another video on this. There were a couple of mistakes that I would say that I made along the way. And firstly, that was thinking that social media was the be all and end all. And that was the only way I was gonna land clients. Complete and utter false myth. And the second one was that I had to have a particular style, aka only light photos, only dark and moody photos. I don't know what it is. It's this sort of thing where people think they have to follow this trend and their Instagram feed needs to look so curated and perfect and every, style of food needs to look the exact same and I think people just focus too much on like followers and it's just so ridiculous because you actually don't need any of that. I'm a very strong salesperson I'd say, you know, I've got a strong background in sales and I think for me it was very natural to, once I had gotten over the overwhelm of how on earth do I start a food photography business, I've got no clients, I know no one and all this sort of thing, I think it was very easy for me to then be like, Actually, yeah, let's start this. I mean, if all these other people can do it, I can do it too. The most natural thing to me was start reaching out to people. And I think that's when the business, I mean, that's when it started, obviously, because I was courageous enough to be like, right, I think my photos are good enough to take them for someone else's business. That's when things took a massive turn for me, for the better. So that was last May. I've been doing it ever since. And it has just, this year has blown up massively and I am so, so chuffed about that. That is essentially what I've been doing. I mean, that is the tea, really. I would really love to know if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to reply to them. And I will definitely be doing a lot more videos on, you know, this has really scratched the surface. I mean, I've got so many stories, so many things that went wrong that I wish I'd known before, but had a pal or something to help me. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna share some more videos on like my story and to help you really if this is what you want to do just to 
how to get there and how to maybe not make the same mistakes and how to make a very successful business of it just as I have done. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and I will see you very soon. Bye bye.